Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel! It is time to add a new animal to the Elm Hill City Zoo and also to the wetlands house that we started in the last episode. So in this video we will add the Asian small cloud otter to our zoo. So the plan for this habitat is to have two different sections for the otters. They will have the outdoor section and an indoor section in the house that we started to build last time. Of course, both of those parts uh, will have the water sections for them to swim in. We know that otters love the water and this is also a wetland section of our zoo, so we need to have a lot of water in here. Uh, so we'll have a bigger water area outside, the outside part will be bigger in general and then we'll have like a smaller uh, water section and indoor section in general in the building. And when it comes to the indoor section, I love how it has turned out. You guys will be able to see it later in the video, but uh, I just wanted to tell you that this is one of my favorites. I, when it comes to the indoor sections in the zoo, I know that I say it a lot, but every time I am able to do something like new and uh, say something that, you know, it really inspired me from the zoos that I saw online or somewhere. And this one is exceptional. So I hope you guys will like it. More on that in the later stage of the video. So I started building this habitat from adding the glass barriers, then I did some terraforming, uh, then I added the path uh, around uh, the habitat and right now I am working on a, a rock wall that this time I showed you guys how I do it because in the uh, recent episodes I just copied it over from some other habitats but I just wanted to update you guys on how to do a wall like that because I had some questions about it, you guys really liked it, so I showed you guys. Uh, the like, main thing is to take this long uh, fall rock from the aquatic park and you know rotate it in different uh, like angles and stuff like that and you got those like pillars and then you can you know like uh, stack those pillars together and they create this beautiful beautiful wall when you add the uh, leaves and uh, foliage to it it looks even better so I totally would recommend that if you are looking for an interesting way uh, to have like a background inside of your uh, enclosures because I think it looks really cool and actually a lot really a lot of zoos use something like that uh, so it's really like realistic to use them because this is such a cool alternative to uh, like a normal mesh or concrete fence uh, so yeah I would totally like recommend that because I think that they are just game changers when it comes to your habitats looking just a bit elevated and tad bit better in my last episode, the platypus episode, I actually got some questions on how I am able to uh, terraform under the glass barriers. And to do that, you simply need to uh, go to the game settings and uh, and disable the terrain collision. And if you do that, you'll be able to terraform through things like scenery, barriers and stuff like that. You are still not able to terraform through water or paths, but uh, it is so much easier to play with that uh, when doing those, you know, underwater viewing galleries and stuff like that. So if you've been struggling with that, I would definitely recommend to go to your settings and check and uncheck some things uh, like check what you can change because uh, those are just those small things that make the game more enjoyable and uh, make those you know water galleries for example easier to do so so just a tiny tip from uh, Caesar creates to you guys on how I was able to uh, terraform under the barriers when it also comes to the last episode I would like to thank 
you guys for the amazing response under that video. I was a bit like not sure if you guys will like it because of how small this habitat was and also how I wasn't really happy with the light inside of it. I thought it was a bit dark and hard to see all the details in it, but you guys loved it. So thank you so much. It really means so much to me. Uh, because yeah, I was really unsure, but you guys loved it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you There are some amazing comments under this video. So uh, every time I read them, I am so beyond happy So thank you guys. I really really appreciate that and you are as always just the best so coming back to the video, uh, as you guys could see, I finished the whole rock uh, wall surrounding the outside part of this habitat. And I also added some of those like mud river banks that I like to uh, add to those uh, water or wetlands habitats. Uh, because I think that they just look like a bank of a river or a, a lake or something like that and we want to like try to recreate the uh, natural aspects of the habitats that our animals live in so I think that adding stuff like that really makes sense. I created this wall in my last platypus uh, exhibit, so if you would like to see how I did it, definitely go and check out this video. After adding those, I started to add a lot of plants to this habitat. The otters actually don't eat plants, so this is another animal that I could go a little bit more crazy with the plants. Uh, so I added a lot of them, still keeping to this more like temperate uh, foliage. We are still in Europe, we still have the different season throughout the year to deal with. So I tried not to add too many of the tropical plants. I couldn't help, my, help myself with the ponytail palm tree that I like to sing in to, to the ground. So it creates like this exotic so kind of grass or something i really think that it looks really like beautiful next to water sections so i added some of those uh, outside i also did it with the cranes and you guys didn't mind it so uh this time i also wanted to add it but of course there will be a lot of dream grass my favorite plant in the game and uh, a lot of then after the plants there'll be a lot of small rocks uh, as always, I also added like uh, a bit of trees here. I wanted to give those otters a shadow. So we have like three trees, I think, in here and some bamboo uh, bushes. But one of the trees will be the new one uh, that I sunk into the ground because I didn't want to have like a such a huge tree. And I think that like it looks really realistic that way. This is this tulpel, tulpel, I don't know how to pronounce it. But I really like the colors of it and I wanted to use it here. So uh, I am glad that I actually did. So yeah, after that, a lot of plants will be added here. Uh, and also a little waterfall because when I was looking for some inspirations for this habitat, many, believe me, many of the small cloth otter habitats around the world have some sort of waterfalls like uh, uh, creeks or stuff like that inside of their habitats. So I definitely wanted to give them a small waterfall in here and I'm glad that I did because it looks really cool. And also uh, we get this like a focal point like in the middle of this habitat that makes it look a bit more like elevated and interesting so uh, yeah, I really, I am really glad that I uh, decided to add this waterfall because I actually made uh, uh, like a decision a while ago not to use any more of the VFXs in this zoo because of you know performance stuff. They really slow down your zoo and your save file. Uh, so yeah, I decided to make an exception here for our lovely otters and add some well, a small waterfall and uh, I haven't noticed any change in the performance, but yeah, in the future we will have to be careful with those. So there will be actually a lot of things in this episode. We'll have, of course, the outside part of the habitat, we'll have the underwater section outside, like 
fully decorated with a lot of rocks and uh, underwater foliage and stuff like that. Then we will build uh, like a viewing platform for the guests to go there to see uh, the otters while they are on the land section of this habitat when they are playing or doing their otter stuff. So yeah, a slightly elevated uh, like platform that will have a roof and really cool like fence. So again, we'll create our own custom like fence for the guests. Uh, then we'll move uh, inside and we'll build a very detailed like indoor section with again really cool fence for the guests. Uh, more on that later, but I completely like I found such a great inspiration for an indoor part for those otters that I completely changed my plans to build something totally different and you guys will be able to see it in a minute. So yeah, this habitat actually took me a lot of time to build and I was really surprised looking on how small the otters are that I've spent so much time on them, but I love them so much actually that I wanted to give them a very like nice and beautiful habitat. This habitat is actually a bit big, I would say, compared to the things that I saw on the internet. When the otters live alone in zoos, they actually have like pretty small habitats, but they are often mixed with other animals, uh, such as, for example, uh, the orangutans, the monkeys, the tapirs, or for example, uh, rhinos, Indian rhinos. So then obviously they get a bit more bigger ones. Uh, but in general, if they live alone, the habitats are not as large. When it comes to the game requirements, this habitat is actually perfect for six of the otters. Like, I was able to nail it. I don't know how I did it, but they actually have like, I think, two meters, two square meters of spare space for six of them that uh, are living here in this habitat. So yeah, we are fine with the game requirements because you guys sometimes ask about it. So just to let you know, but I think that we could actually go a bit smaller. I actually think that the indoor section is just perfect for the six of them. The outdoor section could be a bit smaller, but oh, it's still good to give those animals a bit you know, um, more space to roam around and stuff like that. I think that they would appreciate that in real life. So the land section of the outside habitat is almost done and now I will move on to uh, decorating the uh, underwater section. So we will add a lot of different rocks, uh, also some with the algae on them, so it looks a bit more messy. Uh, actually, one of you, Charlotte, who always uh, comments on my videos, like pointed it out that I should make those, you know, underwater, uh, like, sections a bit more messy a bit more overgrown to make them look a bit more realistic and i totally agree that's why uh this time we are adding a lot of more like those greener rocks a lot of more of decals with uh, this moss effect or something to make it look more like green uh because you know it will be really hard to maintain that really like uh clean look to those underwater sections uh, that are so huge and you know the keepers would have to like clean them constantly uh, this house is a newer addition to our zoo but still I think that over time the water will get a bit murky a bit filled with algae and stuff like that and also this time especially uh, outside will make the water a bit more like murky not so transparent so it's also a bit more realistic after that, I will show you guys a bit of how I do the flooring around the, uh, the habitat. I had to cover like those ugly bits of terrain that uh, are always created when you have those you know sharp uh, differences between the levels of terrain. So you always need to cover it somehow to make it look prettier. I like to do it with, for example, plaster pieces and pretend that this is the path, but the path is actually a bit, you know, further from the glass barrier, but you cannot really see that because it is all covered. 
so yeah, to make it look really clean, I like to cover it with different materials. Then I also uh, customized a bit the uh, glass barrier with some metal pieces and I added the pillars that I did last time for the platypus uh, so that the uh, water section is also finished. And after that, we'll move on to building the viewing platform that I told you guys about. And I am really happy that I decided to build it. At first I didn't want to, but then I thought that uh, we didn't have a lot of those, you know, uh, viewing structures here in the zoo, so why not add it? And I think it also like elevates this uh, habitat a bit. This also creates like this dead end of the path, which I like, I don't enjoy don those because uh, I don't like when the guests need to go to one point and then go back like using the same way that they just did but i think it is okay when it comes to one habitat so they they have to go there to see the whole habitat and stuff like that uh, i don't like it when it comes to for example i don't know you go through five of the habitats you see the animals and there is you know a dead end at the end and then you have to go back all the way uh through the habitats that you just saw and uh, yeah, that kind of dumb doesn't make sense. Not many zoos actually do it when I saw when I see the maps. Uh, uh, often, you know, you go round or you take and take different paths, so you don't use the same path twice. Uh, but as I said, when it comes to only one habitat and uh, uh, you just go there to have a better view for the animals, I think that it is totally fine. Sorry that I sound a bit different today. I have some problems with my throat. I hope that I will not be uh, sick or something like that, but it gets harder and harder to speak to you guys uh, while <laughs> recording this voiceover. So sorry if I am not sounding as enthusiastic <laughs> as always, but it actually started to hurt right now. I will do my best, of course, to record the entire voiceover for the entire speed build section of this video, but uh, if you notice any change in how I sound, this is why. I need to go and take some medicine, probably. So, as you guys noticed, uh, while building those structures, it is very, like, useful to uh, have a reference, I decided to move here like uh, one of the staff members, uh, but there's also this uh, blue, those blueprints on the Steam Workshop where you can uh, download like for example this famous archer that is the same uh, you know size as a human in this game so you can get this reference. Uh, without it, I, for example, tend to build things too large, uh, sometimes too small, but often too large. Uh, so yeah, using that is very, very useful. I wanted to use a lot of wood here because actually uh, we will have a lot of wood on the wetlands house when we'll finish it. I actually plan to add um, an entire episode, uh, like finishing the wetlands house or something, so you guys can see how I decorate buildings, how I add all the details, how I also do the facade. I also plan to add a restaurant to this building, so I think that we'll do all of that after we'll add all the animals to this uh, building, uh, which will be soon. Uh, there will be there won't be a lot of uh, animals in here, so uh, yeah, uh, I plan to do like a non-animal uh, episode with just building. But I think it could actually be very useful to you guys to see different techniques and different ways to decorate your building. So I definitely will do an episode like that really soon. So yeah, I wanted to keep to this uh, wood uh, style, like wood detailing. So the entire back wall and also the inside part of the roof are aligned with the wood. And then we have those pillars also made from wood. And right now I am building this uh, first custom barrier for the guests. I will build two today. They will be a bit similar, but here I wanted to use a lot of wood, so I did. Uh, and also I wanted to use glass for the guests to see the otters better when they are, for example, diving and stuff like that. Uh, I also added this like tilted upper like part of it it is really common in zoos uh, i don't know it is probably easier for the guests to lean in on lean on it or something i don't know but 
many many barriers that i saw in the zoos like for the guests especially have this like slightly tilted top and i think that actually this makes uh, like this reg regular uh, fence look a bit more like interesting so i really like this detail and i decided to use it here on this uh fence and also the fence that i will create inside and also I showed you guys how I created this interesting like fence planter thing uh, that uh, I used around the enclosure just for the gas to prevent them from you know going off the path and stuff like that we are building it uh, this habitat's really close to the street so we don't want to go the guys to to go there to go off the path so i always like to you know surround the paths with some fencing and stuff like that and then i think it makes total sense when it comes to the Asian small clothed otter, if you watched my overview of all the animals added with a wetlands pack, you know how much I love those little guys. I think that they are the most adorable animal in the game right now. They are just beautiful, they are so cute. I love that they are like living in bigger groups. I also love that we can mix them with other animals and yeah, their animations, their sounds in particular are so amazing and so cute they are li really loud but i like the this about them and yeah i am so happy that they were added i think that the giant otter with ha will have some really like rough time <laughs> with those guys because i think that we will go like straight for the small otters while building our zoos and uh, not for the giant version so uh yeah give the giant one a bit of love because uh yeah it can be a bit you know neglected right now okay so we moved on to uh, the indoor part of this habitat and i was looking at different indoor parts when it comes to the uh, asian small clothed otter and i uh, encountered two different habitats from two different zoos that really inspired me and those were the Berlin Zoo and the Bronx Zoo, especially the Bronx Zoo in New York, because what really stood out to me was that the uh, like the intersection wasn't like totally closed off. It was just like a normal fence or lower barrier for the guests and uh, uh, like. The animals weren't leaving like behind the glass, there wasn't anything like between the guests, any cage, any glass barrier or anything between the guests and the animals, so I really loved that idea. Uh, and yeah, it is used both in the Berlin Zoo and the Bronx Zoo, uh, probably in some other zoos too, but I really loved it and it totally changed my whole like approach to this um, to this intersection, but also to the entire uh, like house because I think that we'll use this thing uh, uh, in the future habitats that we'll build as well. Uh, because I really lo love the look of it. I wanted to go like for the same thing that we did with the uh, platypus, just you know the glass barrier. Uh, the altar is more or more or less on the same level uh, as the guests, and uh, yeah, changing that and going for like a lowered uh, enclosure that the guests are looking at the animals from the above uh, and there is this water section like between the guests and the animals but it's still a bit lower and thanks to that we don't need to have like this uh, barrier that is straight up to the ceiling we just need this barrier this lower where the guests can go lean on against and have this like perfect view for the animals they can hear them they can also smell them and stuff like that i think it's so such a wonderful like experience for the guests and it also looks so modern and so beautiful that i definitely wanted to use them we also didn't do uh, much of uh intersections like that i think that we only did it for the koalas back in the small mammal house so yeah i definitely wanted to use that because i think that it is just such a cool idea and i definitely would love to see uh the authors like that myself so uh, why not go and try to recreate something like that of course we didn't have a lot of space so the water section is a bit small uh, they are still able to swim there they uh, still are able to use a 
a lot of land area um, and I think it looks really fine for six authors as you guys will see in the cinematics by the end of this video so yeah I really love 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 this intersection we were also able to use a lot of uh, exotic plants of course and I surrounded all of this uh, section with the rocks I just simply changed the color of the ones that I used outside and uh, I added a lot of uh, you know tropical plants to them like above and in between and stuff like that and in the end I am so 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 in love with how it is looking of course I had to like hide some things trick some things as always uh, because we have this like slightly elevated path where the guests can go and see the platypus we couldn't like like uh, terraform around it because the game doesn't allow you to terraform near the paths so I decided to hide it with like an implemented planter in here so we also have uh, this like uh, wall that I created for the cranes used here and like a slightly elevated planter but I actually think that it looks really really good good with all those planters and that the guests are able to go up there and see the altars above uh, all those exotic plants yeah i really really love it and again i used here uh, the tree bark path i think that it really helps to sell the idea of an intersection because this like, tree bark is really uh like often used in those it is easy to clean uh you just change it for a new one if it's dirty uh, and yeah it's it really looks good in those sections so i would definitely recommend to use them uh, if you are building those uh, by the way also some questions yes you can totally add the paths into the uh the habitats just as you do your walk through walk in habitats it works the same you just don't need to add the gate for the gas the animals will be able to go through the path they won't be i don't know uh unhappy that it is there uh, so yeah definitely a very cool idea to use them i also like the gravel path to use it inside of the uh enclosures but yeah the tree bark path is the one that i am using the most the only problem I had with this intersection was that uh, because I lowered it so uh, like low into the ground to have uh, the better view for the people so that it, it created this like viewing balcony or something. Uh, so it created this really like big uh, gap between the intersection and the outer section like the height dif difference. So I had to figure out the way uh, uh, how the animals will get in there so I decided to use the stairs uh, the fall rock stairs that were added with the aquatic park and sort of surrounded with this rock wall that we created for the cranes in the end I really like it but uh, let me just tell you that I had many many problems with it uh, when it comes to the traversable area I don't know those small otters are so tiny but they couldn't walk up there I had to adjust a lot of things but in the end I was able to uh, make it work so I am really really happy uh, one thing is that also you will see that the doors like uh, between the indoor and the outer section but also between the indoor section and the backstage area for the otters are a bit big and this is because I wanted to, the keepers to be able to go in there and I also wanted to mm, them to be able to fill the underwater feeder that is outside so I had to make sure that they will be able to go uh like there so that's why the doors are maybe a bit too big when it comes to the otter but uh, they uh, like do those two purposes they are for the otters but also for our stuff uh, so uh, that's why they are so big of course I will add here a lot of rocks a lot of tropical plants and some decals uh, that will serve as a transition between the tree bark path and the dirt around it so uh, in the end I 
I am super, super happy with how this inter area is looking. I think that this idea was just, you know, the best that I could have for this house to make things a bit more like interesting. And I hope you guys will like it as well. In the cinematic shots, you will also see uh, the info boards created, of course, by my buddy Rare Beast. So thank you, buddy. Once again, they are truly amazing. And when it comes to the fun facts about the otters, we don't have much time, but just a bit of facts. The Asian small clothed otter is the smallest of all the 13 otter species. They are the most social of all the otters, uh, living in an extended family groups of 12 to 20 individuals. Only the alpha pair breeds and previous offspring help raise the young. They have partially webbed toes and very short claws that do not extend past the fleshy parts of the toes. And this is where their name comes from. And also, each otter's scent is as individual as our fingerprints. Okay guys, this is all that I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed our Asian small clothed alter episode. I certainly did and I am so glad that they were added to the game and that we finally have it in the Elm Hill City Zoo. If you enjoyed this video, please consider to subscribe to my channel. This would really help me out to grow my channel. Uh, so if you are still wondering if you should do it or not, the answer is obviously yes, please do it. Click that subscribe button down below. Thanks to that you won't miss any of my future uploads. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, comment down below if you enjoyed this video and also what was your favorite part of the build? Did you like the outdoor section more? Did you like the indoor section more or maybe it was a viewing platform let me know down in the comments i would love to hear some feedback for you guys it really helps for the future videos okay guys thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one bye guys